Welcome back to Tribune Living. I'm Brandon Dawkins. For this episode, we're in the heart of downtown Springville. We're going to check in on the Springville Library and find out about growth in recent years. We're going to get an update on the city from the mayor. And then we're going to visit with the fire department to see how they teach kids here about fighting fires. Well, we're back with Tribune Living, and I'm Brandon Dawkins, and we're glad that you joined us. And I'm actually here in the Springville Library today with one of the librarians, Vicki Stone. Vicki, I wanted to come out and share a little bit about the Springville Library today because I know y'all have been in this building on Main Street for a couple of years, and y'all have seen tremendous growth. Can you tell us a little bit about that and what you think has spurred that? Well, we're right here on the Main Street now. We now have two libraries split in two, so it's really twice as big as right. it was before because we have the adult side and the children's side mm -hmm. next door. And then we have uh, young uh, leading librarians that are really good with the social media and they're on Facebook and we have uh, a Springville town site too and people can check every week to see what programs are going on. And you said recently y'all ran out of library cards to we get We to had people. to order a thousand more. Well, that's a good problem to have, <laughs> It's for a sure. good problem to have. I know this summer y'all had a lot, um, of course, children's programming, but you had a lot of adult programming with some lunch and learns. You got more of those coming up. Tell people what's coming up in November and December. Okay. Well, we just finished one in October and did a, a real cute craft with cans and flowers. And then we're gonna do, uh, another uh, ornament uh, thing and then we're uh, we're going to do food the bark the cinnamon bark or okay. the peppermint bark and uh, maybe microwave fudge or something like that so when are those events like which week of the month when, when do people when does that happen it's usually about the uh, third week or yeah something like that it's every Friday the Friday of each month and it's a lunch and learn and they bring a sandwich and we have water here and we always have some kind of dessert. Okay so they can find out about that I'm assuming on your website they if can. they want to plan to come they to can. that. And they can sign up. Okay well, um, why does do you think a lot the libraries continue to be so relevant in our communities today? Well there's something for the kids to do there's entertainment there's something going on all the time and a lot of people do use their you know all the mechanisms and stuff for reading and everything like that but people like to hold a book and if you're questioning this stuff it's nice to have books that you can come in and and check out on different subjects we have a lot of people that'll check out 15 books at a time so well and so important to be setting that example and showing that to our children and speaking of the children that's where we're going next we're headed headed over to the Springville Children's Library we'll be right back Kitty really does not want a turnip. Kitty really wants candy. And we're back, as promised, in the Springville Children's Library here on Main Street. And I'm here with one of the children's librarians, Sarah Reese. Sarah, thanks for joining us today. Y'all actually just finished up a story time. Mm -hmm. The um, Springville Library, as a whole has grown tremendously in the last couple of years since y'all made this move. Tell us um, how the library has grown and what this move has done. Um, well, I mean, be able to have a whole separate children's department is a huge benefit to the community. Right. Um, we've able, been able to add so many books to our collection and so much extra programming that, uh, you know, we've had many, many more children. What? 
What kind of programming do y'all offer for people who don't know? And, and tell people the best way to find out about that programming. Well, we have a Facebook page. Um, also, the City of Springville website has a library tab where you can view our newsletter, uh, right. springvillealabama.org. Um, and uh, we have story time every Thursday at 1030. Other programs kind of come and go. You know, you just have to keep up with our... our Events. And really busy in the summertime, of course. Always I know y'all had a very busy summer. Yes. Yeah, we had up to 175 people for our summer reading programs. We had to hold them down at the church down the street because we just couldn't accommodate inside of this building. That's so. definitely another good problem to have, for sure. Mm -hmm. Well, um, what kind of what ben kind of benefit was it to the community overall to be able to make make this move two years ago and expand in this capacity? Like, why is this good for parents of young kids? Oh, it's really really important for kids to read. It just um, tremendous benefits to lots and lots of access to books. Um, the middle school even told us that some of the reading scores of the elementary school maybe um, were increasing since we started um, our summer reading programs since they were growing so much that's and incredible their reading scores are improving along with our growth so that's been really great we've started um, a thousand books before kindergarten where parents can sign their child up and for every hundred books that they read to their child they can come get a little prize and um, with the goal of reading a thousand books to your preschool or before they even start kindergarten. Now is that something that's going on all year long? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's not a program that you come to, you just come and you sign up okay. and you just come in for every time you get a hundred books. And well, Sarah, thanks so much for sharing. That's some great information. That is am amazing to know that as the library is growing, right. reading scores in the community grow. And, yeah. and that pretty much says it all. So yeah. thanks so much for, for joining us and for telling people. And thanks for joining us and getting a, a closer look at the Springville Library today. For Trustful, for Tribune Living, I'm Brandon Dawkins. Welcome back to Tribune Living. Again, I'm Brandon Dawkins with Tribune Digital Media, and I'm here in Springville with Mayor Will William Isley. Mayor Isley, thanks for joining us today. Thank you for having me. We wanted to update people about some special things going on in Springville, and specifically, let's talk about this Forever Wild program. The Forever Wild program is going to be uh, coming to Springville sometime in 2019. Okay. And that's where the city has joined with the state to protect 380 acres in Springville from construction of any type okay. and it will be uh, an actual uh, 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 a wildlife park in which we walk through trails, do canoeing and kayaking and observe nature. There will be some classes taught to children and to adults as to, to indoctrinate them into what species are on this property. It should be a fantastic place and we expect uh, people from all over to come well so it'll be a great great uh, addition and asset to the city how does something like that benefit a city just brings people to your city they come they visit they shop they eat here they buy their gas here and they want to come back because of the event or the park itself is a such a it's going to be such a great addition and it's going to be a draw from to, to the city from others. Well, y'all got some other things going on with your park systems here. Update yeah. people on that. Well, the, the park system. We over the last ten years, we built a downtown city park yeah. called Big Springs Park. Placed a splash pad there. Right. Built Very a, popular. We built use a it. walking trail there. We're using it now for our music concert called mm -hmm. Spring Fest annually. We built, uh, bought, and have started construction on a sixty-acre sports park. And we're about 25% complete with it. I hope in the next couple of years to see the baseball and softball programs construct fields there to help us complete that park. Okay. But it's a 60-acre it's a park. It will be state-of-the-art, and we look so much forward to being able to provide a better park system and ball fields for the children in our community to play on. Our current fields are dated and constructed back in the 1980s. So it's time for a change. Yes, ma'am. And as you do things like that, though, it brings in traffic to your city. And so you said that y'all have done a traffic study. Let's talk about yeah. how that's impacted downtown. Did, and did what... a traffic study. We were charged with doing a traffic study back in 2010 mm -hmm. when we ran a feasibility study and it recommended that in 2010 we had traffic issues. <laughs> well, attempting to do something to address those issues is very, very hard. Uh, trying to find other ways around Springville has been problematic. Uh, most of those places are roads that you could build 
are on the outskirts of town and they're owned by private property owners that are not willing to sell their property right. to build a road on to help get up to gain a better access and a way to depart from Springville. Leaves us with our four-way intersection where we have a stop sign. Right. And we did a, a feasibility study, a traffic study, and the recommendation uh, in that study is that a traffic light be installed there. Well, I anticipate that a traffic light will be installed there uh, as early as the spring of 2019. Okay. And that'll be a temporary light to be followed by a permanent red light with turn lanes. Oh, and, okay. And so turn lanes are the future of that intersection. But today, all that the state of Alabama and the federal government, that is a federal highway mm -hmm. and a state highway, not a city street. And they dictate what can be done there. Okay. And their recommendation is a temporary red light that will last until the year 2023. Okay. That's what you should be seeing happening at that location between now and early spring. And all of that's just to make things go smoother and yes. easier and help benefit right. the community right. overall. It, it is. We have traffic issues numerous times of the year. We have Homestead Hollow, which is a four really time, good four, example. <laughs> four times a year they, they have that event and it creates traffic issues at the four-way stop sign right. and other places too. And this will help address those traffic issues. Okay. Well, um, Mayor Isley, thanks so much for the update and thanks for having us in your community today. Mm -hmm. And again, we'll be back from Springville with more in a moment. Welcome back. Well, now I'm here at the Springville Fire Department and I'm here with Chief Richard Harvey. Thanks for joining us today. Oh, you're and so welcome. While we were out here just highlighting some things in Springville, I wanted to a chance to show people your mobile education unit. And so tell people what that is. Some communities have them, but tell them what it is and, and what it does and, and how y'all use it. That unit gives us the ability to go to schools and daycares and uh, other areas to show various um, situations uh, from a fire safety perspective that uh, to help educate it's predominantly designed for our smaller uh, younger kids mm -hmm. uh, it also does uh, tornado safety oh, okay. uh, we can simulate a tornado inside a house and how to take shelter in an inside closet um, but it's really designed as a prop to be able to to help kids understand that when they wake up and they smell smoke or they see smoke how to get low and crawl uh, how to feel for a door. There's a door that's heated so that you can feel what a hot door would feel like and how not to open it. Inside of that, um, you know, we have a, um, a window that's got an emergency exit on it to show them how to use that emergency exit. We talk to them about doing exit drills in the house and how to have two ways out of every room. So it's just a great prop to be able to use to actually show hands-on uh, what to do in, in the event that there's a fire or smoke in a house. Now, do y'all do that once a year or a couple of times a year? Because it got me thinking, I have little kids, some of those things we've never really reviewed. And so that is something that sometimes even parents kind of forget about making a plan for. So how often do y'all do that with these with these kids? Usually it's once a year. Okay. October is typically fire prevention month. Okay. Um, it's the, the history of fire prevention goes all the way back to uh, the Great Chicago Fire. And um, so during the month of October is where we typically schedule, we go to the elementary schools, the daycares, some of the churches uh, to, to really push that message. Uh, we do fire prevention throughout the year, right. you know, as, as different events. And we have tours that come to the fire station on a regular basis where we'll set it up. We may have birthday parties or uh, where they ask us and we can set the trailer up. What is it about that young age that they really will absorb um, information from a setting like that? Well, a lot of it is is, is they're still they're, they're in their developmental process of, of learning what's right, what's wrong, uh, the proper ways. So start young uh, to teach them good habits, and hopefully those habits will, you know, 
uh, carry on. The other thing that's really good about that age is uh, if you really entertain them, they really get something, they go home and they, they, it's amazing how much they pass along to parents. Right. When we talk about exit drills and they go home and say, mommy, mommy, we need to do an exit drill and mom doesn't know what an exit drill right. is. <laughs> so we actually get to use the kids then as instructors for the parents okay. uh, to think about things that typically people don't think about. Well, Chief Harvey, thanks so much for doing this today and for giving us a look at the simulator. And again, thanks for joining us, and we hope you've enjoyed this episode of Tribune Living here in Springville. For Tribune Digital Media, I'm Brandon Dawkins.